Hi, before we get started with the review of Super Bad, I do have a message for a certain someone who will remain nameless. Hey, Denise. Thanks a lot for standing me up at the movies. Thanks a lot for not calling. Thanks more so for leaving me a breakup message on the answering machine. Very cool. Very cool. Um, anyway, review of Superbad. Superbad, okay. Uh, Superbad is sort of a coming of age tale. There's something I won't be getting anytime soon. Um, coming, coming of age tale of, uh, two. Uh, about two best friends hoping to get it on with the high school girls of their dreams and trying to find liquor for the big party that night. With this plot being the same old, same old, kind of like the sex I've had for the last 17 and a half months, um, screenwriters Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg have imbued the concept with a great deal of true-to-life original comedy. The main characters, also named Seth and Evan, are two average nerdy teens uncomfortable in their own skin and coming to terms with the fact that their girlfriend broke up with them over the phone. Summer together, uh, they won't be able to hang out after that because they're both off to college. Wow, that must be really hard having four months to deal with the fact that you're not going to see someone again. Yeah, you know, much, much harder than trying to call someone and just keep getting their voicemail, wondering if they're dead as you sit and watch this movie, wondering what happened to them, and then to come home and have an answering machine message that lasts three minutes and 46 seconds telling you how it just never quite worked for 18 months. Yeah, that's hard. I um, wonder if the movie was originally supposed to be a 70s or 80s period piece, hence its throwback title and 70s style soundtrack. But it was a clever idea not to have it in that in either of those periods because it feels much more genuine setting it today. You know, genuine. Like my love for you was. But unlike yours was for me. And it probably saved them a lot on the budget. Yeah, I could have saved a lot on my budget if nine days ago you broke up with me. So that way I didn't have to spend $130 on dinner. $200 on the overnight stay at the inn, and the $300 DKNY bag you asked me to get you for six weeks before your birthday, which, by the way, was kick-ass. Thank you. I miss all the real-life drama of being a teen, you know, uh, uh, fake IDs, um, getting picked on by bigger kids, uh, making sure you get a good grade on class as easy as home ec, wondering if your girlfriend is now f***ing the UPS guy that she always thought was so cute. Um, the movie gets mired down in some over-the-top comedy, courtesy of Evan and Seth's third-wheel friend, Ultra Nerdy Fogel. Uh, Fogel and his way-too-long, non-stop, ongoing, continuous, never-ending trip in the backseat of a police car, which uh, reminds me of <laughs> the last dinner I had with your family, Denise. That's kind of what it felt like. Speaking of your family, just... I'm putting it out there. This comes from the heart. This is not the bitter me or anything talking. It's something that you should consider the next time you do have like a new guest, you know, coming to meet the family. Just keep this in mind because it really might change how you approach everything. Your mother's a Vogel cop car stuff was a little too stupid and unrealistic um, for me in comparison to the rest of the picture. You know, like for instance, if if I had to draw a comparison. The way I felt for you was real, true emotion. The way you felt for me was a load of bullshit. First 30 minutes of this movie is for almost any person who remembers what it's like to be in high school and for anyone who can also appreciate some honest-to-goodness teenage profanity. Hey, you remember honesty, right, Denise? You remember that. You gave me a 20-minute speech on it. After we left the swingers club, I had to hear about Oh, this is honesty. Listen, had I known that that chick was a tranny, I wouldn't have even gotten that. I mean, you know, the fact is, a girl gets a job in a job, you're expected to reciprocate. All right? So now I've got that problem, and I have to deal with it, and I have to deal with it in, in a mature way. So I did what anyone would have done, and I told you about it as soon as we were out of there. I mean, what, I was supposed to tell you while it was going on? No!
you know, I, we both did different things that day in that place. That place was crazy, and you can't hold that against me forever. You know, and I was a little embarrassed. I mean, come on. I mean, God's sake, have a little sympathy. I mean, I had no idea it would be so good. Um, to that, this is very much a guy's movie about guy things, and doesn't seem to me to quite get back to being for everyone until the last 15 minutes or so. Nevertheless, I did find it hysterically funny. No, that's it. No more comments about you. It's not all you, you, you. Everything's not about you. I know you want it to be about you, but it's not.